Hey guys, it's Heather. Sorry it's been so long since my last video. Um, so my last video was talking about a day in the life of a long-term care nurse, and that is kind of, you know, my what my job has been since I graduated as an LVN. That's something that I've been doing for, you know, quite a while now, almost two years actually, which is kind of hard to believe. Um, so I feel very well versed in that role and you know, my job description and position there. So, um, but I thought since this semester was so different than other semesters that I would do a couple of videos talking about the different rotations. And I posted on my Facebook page um, for this channel um, asking if anybody wanted a video over doing, you know, labor and delivery nursing, anything like that. And I got a lot of replies that they did. So, um, I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. Obviously I'm not talking about this in the context of me actually being a labor and delivery nurse or working in labor and delivery. I'm only talking about my experience as a nursing student in a labor and delivery and postpartum capacity. So just want to put that out there real quick. Um, labor and delivery is a specialty and postpartum as well. Anything in that realm is considered a specialty. It's a completely different area of nursing. It's its own breed. It's, it's got its own, you know, patho, its own rules, its own, you know, its own knowledge base that you need to work in that area. So, um, the way my school does it, it really actually depended on your clinical group, but in my clinical group, we had two LND days and we had three postpartum days. So, um, let me start with the first part of the process and that would be going into labor and actually having the baby. Um, <clears throat> so their goal for us was really to see at least one vaginal birth and one C-section birth, which I did got to, I got to see both, each one of those. Um, so because it's such a specialty, your role as a student is really just as an observer. You don't give any meds, you're not doing any cervical exams, though I know that can vary based on the school and maybe even your clinical instructor. Um, I personally, and I don't think anybody in my group did a cervix, cervical exam, just because it's something that is so, you have to really have, um, you know, you have to have practiced it a whole bunch. And us you know, being real invasive like that and getting all up in somebody's business to feel something that we're not going to have really any idea of what we're feeling is just not a really good learning experience and it's not good for the patient either. It's not just checking heart sounds, checking lung sounds, and maybe we don't know what we're, we're hearing. This is something completely different. Um, so yeah, anyways, we're really just in an observation shadowing type day. Um, the skills that you will get to do for labor and delivery most definitely is going to be a Foley catheter and maybe an IV or two. Um, I didn't personally get to start any IVs, but um, I did get to do a Foley, which, you know, I've done a lot of Foley's, but I will welcome any any amount of practice that I can get for that. Um, so really uh, what we did was we'd get on the floor, we'd get assigned to our nurse, and we would just really just shadow and follow them around the whole day and just kind of watching them and seeing how they make decisions, how they advocate for their patients. Because one interesting thing about labor and delivery is how autonomous the nurses are in labor and delivery. The doctor really only comes for the delivery. They're not there 90% of the time. They might make a round real quick, check on the patient, make some orders, but 90% of the time it's just the nurse in there with the patient checking on everything, checking the fetal heart monitor, Sorry, my dog's right here. I've hit her in the face. Um, checking the fetal heart monitor, um, doing the cervical exams. Um, their really cool thing about labor and delivery is the standing orders. They have a standing orders that have a protocol for basically anything that you could want to do in labor and delivery. And I'm sure these nurses, once they've been there for a certain amount of time, kind of know them like the back of their head. So they just, you know, they're on it. They're increasing the Pitocin. They're turning the patient. They can read the fetal heart strips like anything, you know, it's, it's not foreign to them. Um, so it's really, it's a really interesting area, especially if you have a lot of confidence, if a really big desire to be independent. I think that's a really great, um, place in nursing to be. Um, so like I said, a really big thing in labor and delivery is realizing that although you really, you can only see the mom, you're really caring for two patients. You have the mom and you have the baby. And sometimes you have to, you know, think about other family members as well, whoever their kind of birth partner is, whether it be their husband or their partner or 
their mom or, or whoever, you know, you really have to think about them in that time too. But really your main focus is the mom and the baby. So, um, I thought something that's kind of interesting reading fetal heart strips is not as difficult as you think when you first look at it it's very it's kind of you know looking at it like an EKG for the first time you really don't know what you're looking at but we got really good and ex uh, practice um, reading the fetal heart strips and I was really lucky one of my clinical instructors was amazing and she took extra time out of her schedule to really teach us the fetal heart monitors am I a well-versed fetal heart rate monitor um, reader, no, but if I look at one, I can get a very basic idea and understanding of what is going on with that patient. I can't immediately look at it and instantly know, you know, what's going on there, but I can, by the end of my clinical rotation, I was able to, like I said, have a very basic, um, understanding of what I was reading. So, um, that's something that I really wish I could have gotten a little bit more practice at, of having more labor and delivery days is really trying to read and interpret a fetal interpret a fetal heart monitor. Um, another big thing, especially in my area, is induced labors. I'd say almost every mom that I encountered and that my classmates encountered was a mom that was being induced. So that has its own set of <clears throat> rules, regulations, procedures, protocols, and that's usually induction with pitocin which is a synthetic synthetic hormone like oxytocin, which stimulates um, uterine contractions, and that helps get the labor going. So there are a lot of things that you have to monitor with a woman, a, a mom who is being induced with Pitocin, and um, that's something that is written in a pro pro protocol, excuse me, but must be you know, carried out and continued with the nurse's judgment. So you might start off with a very low dose of Pitocin. It's been a couple of hours. The mom's not really progressing. They're not dilated. They're not, they're not increasing in dilation. They're not increasing in their effacement. So the nurse themselves will decide, okay, it's time for us to increase this Pitocin. Or maybe they're, they're progressing too much and the nurse decides to bring it back down. So that's an example of the autonomy. Yes, it's written in an order protocol, to increase by so many or decrease by so many, but the nurse is the one that's actually there checking the patient and deciding based on their expertise and their judgment, okay, this is what needs to happen right now. So it's a very, it's a very interesting area. And, um, especially being in the hospital, <clears throat> it's definitely not an area where natural, at least what I experienced where natural births take place. It was very medically oriented, which is cool from a learning perspective, from a pers personal perspective, being a woman, it could be completely different, but that's not what we're there, we're there for. So um, overall, it was very interesting. I learned a lot. I don't know if I would want to be a labor and delivery nurse. Like I said, my main thing that I liked about it was the autonomy. I am very interested in having a role as a nurse that's more autonomous, and that's something that did appeal to me from a labor and delivery standpoint. I know that I started this channel saying I wanted to be a labor and delivery nurse. However, I've been exposed to much more areas of nursing now, and it's no longer my my dream. So for some people, there was a lot of people in my class that really enjoyed it. Even one of the males wants to be a labor and delivery nurse. So um, I, I think it's definitely something that if you're interested in, go in there with an open mind and, and try to learn as much and see as much as you can. Um, on the somewhat flip side of that is the postpartum area, which is where all the moms go after they've had their baby, depending on whether they had a vaginal birth or a C-section, a predetermined amount of time bearing that everything is you know normal um, the big thing there is that you have for each one patient I guess you could say you have two patients because you have the mom and you have the baby um, some <clears throat> facilities have nurseries where the baby spends the majority of their time this hospital does have a nursery that we were at but they um, are really big on couplet care is what they call and that's where they really um, encourage rooming in of the baby with the parents they will take excuse me they will take the baby for short periods of time but overall they really want the baby in the room with mom with dad whoever's whoever's there um so we had to be you know really ready to go to deal with these newborns and that was definitely an experience because I don't have a ton of experience with newborns but I really did learn a lot um, our first day, we learned how to do a postpartum assessment, which the biggest thing with a postpartum assessment is learning to do how to do a fundal check, which the fundus is what you call the uterus, 
in a pregnant or postpartum woman. And so the biggest thing is learning how to check for their fundus, learning to check the placement, and learning to check if it's firm or boggy. Um, a fundus should always be firm. A boggy fundus is never good. So um, that's something we learn to check. Just a couple of other things that you learn to check in a postpartum area is lochia, which is the type of bleeding that a woman experiences after she's given birth. It's completely normal. It's somewhat like a menstrual period, but it's not. <laughs> Uh, it's just a type of vaginal bleeding that happens after birth. Um, depending on whether they're breastfeeding or bottle feeding, you also learn how to do breast checks. Um, I'd say probably the biggest thing in postpartum is education, especially if you have a new mom. This new mom, new parent is extremely anxious. They're scared. They want to, you know, they want to do good by their, their newborn, but they might not have, you know, a ton of knowledge to know how to do it. So, yeah, um, that's probably the biggest thing. We actually had a day where we had to do... Um, postpartum discharge teaching to the mom. Um, I personally did it to a mom and a dad, um, but whoever, you know, the family is. And uh, it was very interesting because I've learned a lot through my lectures, but I obviously don't know everything and you can't be prepare prepared for every question that they ask you. So I had to really rely on my nursing instructor who was in the room with me to help provide some of the information to my, to my parents. But, um, Overall, I'd say postpartum is, is interesting. It's a little bit more laid back because it's funny. A lot of the nurses will say it's one of the only areas of nursing where you're dealing with 99% of the time a healthy patient who has elected to be there. So everybody's happy. I mean, the break room is constantly filled with chocolates and cupcakes and cookies and all kinds of stuff. Um, biggest thing also besides assessments is pain medicine and postpartum, you're giving a lot of Norco, you're giving a lot of Motrin, um, and that's really important to stay on top of. Um, other than that, I'd say education is a big thing. So when you go to your postpartum area, make sure you're really brushed up on newborn care, um, care for the mom, signs and symptoms to look for once they go home, because I think that's going to be the hardest part for them is when they go home how to take care of themselves, how to take care of baby, how to how to rely on other people is going to be a big thing for mom too. Not expecting that she should do it all by herself, but that she needs to rely on her partner, grandparents, a babysitter, a nanny, who, whoever is going to be that support person for her at home, especially for the first few weeks so that she can ensure that she's taking care of herself so that she can take care of baby. Um, most postpartum nurses have eight patients and that is four moms and four babies. So it can definitely get a little hectic. The most we had was two moms and two babies. So um, I really I really did enjoy postpartum. Again, I don't think I would want to work there. I, I miss the med surge aspect. I miss the disease processes. I miss learning about the patho of things. So, um, But I, a lot of people, again, really liked postpartum as well. And I could definitely see <clears throat> the benefits of being labor and delivery and postpartum prepared for working in either one. Um, I think that, you know, putting those together is really helpful and I think it would be a good, a good thing to do if you want to be labor and delivery to sometimes go to postpartum and, and vice versa. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say real quick that I noticed though, is most people that were in labor and delivery, that's, they knew that's what they wanted to do from the beginning and they had always worked in labor and delivery. I don't think, not that it can't happen obviously, but the, I don't think I encountered anybody who had just kind of come there on a whim or anything like that. It seemed really to be something that these women, these it was mostly women um, nurses that were just really particularly drawn to labor and delivery and they knew that's what they wanted to do. And a couple of my classmates were the same way. They knew going into nursing school they wanted to be labor and delivery nurses. And based on our experience on the, on the labor and delivery floor, um, they were still wanting to go with that decision. So, um, yeah. Uh, we had to do two care plans. They weren't, you know, a big deal or anything like that. They were just care plans. Just kind of have to focus on different things um, with a laboring mom and a postpartum mom than you would, you know, a regular med surge patient. Um, but yeah, I hope that gives you a little bit better of an insight um, of what it's like in the labor and delivery postpartum clinical. Um, overall, we had five weeks. It was very short. By the time we really started to learn the ropes of everything, we were already you know, set to go to our next rotation. So, um, that's probably the biggest complaint. It's just not enough time. Um, but is, it is such a specialty in it, you know, if you're going into that, we really need more of the med surge time, which is why we get more med surge time to become a more well-rounded nurse. A lot of time in labor and delivery, especially if you're not going to go in that 
in that rotation or that specialty is not going to benefit you overall as a nurse. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so anyways, like I said, hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight of what it's like to, you know, be in a labor delivery postpartum setting. And um, I'll be doing a, another video also right after this. Uh, my friend Nick, who has a uh, nursing channel too, um, I'll link it down below. He tagged me in a nursing nursing school tag video I think um, and I thought that was fun because I watch a lot of YouTube videos and there's always fun tags and there's never any for nursing people so I thought that would be fun to do um, all right guys well if you have any comments or questions put them below or you can post them on my Facebook page um, and thank you so much for watching I will talk to y'all soon bye